On this program, we'd like to talk about undercovered stories, stories the news media should be taking more seriously. And this week's story was also undercovered last week, and it'll be undercovered next week too, and the week after that. It is a systemic problem, a structural defect with our criminal justice system. Matt Taibbi calls it the divide. I've known Matt for years. He's written for Rolling Stone and Men's Journal, and he's now at First Look Media. And his latest book is called The Divide, American Injustice in the Age of the Wealth Gap. He asserts that it's easier than ever for the rich to get richer and dodge legal consequences for their actions, while the poor lack the means to fight back and end up in prison. He says the media should be casting more light on these inequities. And he joined me here earlier in New York to lay out his case. So see what you think. Matt, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me on. This seems like, in general, a massively undercovered story that you try to tell. Yeah, How no, do you think it is? Well, on the, on the white collar side, I think there are a lot of reasons for that. I think many of these cases are way too complicated to do, um, especially on television. Uh, if you want to say, try to describe what municipal bond bid rigging is uh, on TV, it's going to take three or four minutes to do. And, I, and, and a lot of television reporters just sort of give up at the start. And then the, the complexity of these cases in general just precludes any kind of treatment except for the long form kind of uh, treatment that I was very, very lucky to be able to do at Rolling Stone magazine. So even for daily newspapers, you think it's over their heads, so to speak? It's not over their heads, it's just, it's, it's a very difficult fit. It's also, a, it's a very tough sell to readers too, because it's very hard to make sexy for uh, or, uh, regular audiences. And um, it's, you have to do a lot of work to make this stuff interesting. So and, tell me how you did that. I, you know, you, in this, in the, in the book, you go from these white collar cases to these cases of low income people trying to get by, facing uh, severe situations with, with prisons and with courts. Right. How did you try to make it sexy, so to speak? Well, the, on the other, the other side of it, there's no, that, that's an easy sell. I mean, there's nothing, <laughs> there's no problem with making sensational a story about a person like, for instance, here in New York City, who I met, uh, a 35-year-old African-American bus driver who gets arrested for, quote unquote, obstructing pedestrian traffic, which is basically code for being black on a Tuesday night. I mean, there are all sorts of incredible re revelations in this book about things that happen to ordinary people when they get caught up in the system. You write that it's evolved this way over time and for a thousand reasons so that almost nobody is aware of the whole picture, the two worlds so separate that they're barely visible to each other. Right. Do you think the press is a part of that? Yeah. Um, is this on purpose? Do the institutions like it this way, that it can't really all be seen? I don't, I don't think it's on purpose. I think it's accidental. I mean, I, I, a subtext of this book is that I myself, who is intensely interested in a lot of these issues, was totally unaware of a lot of the things that, that go on in the criminal justice system, these ridiculous, mindless cruelties that happen on a daily basis in the court system. You have to be going out of your way to pay attention to these things, and the victims are all behind bars, so you don't see them. There's a scene that you describe being on Rikers Island, wait, waiting in a room, uh, and, and uh, the, one of these uh, courtroom shows is playing on the communal TV. Right. Judge Alex is blasting, and you really don't have any choice but to watch it. Everybody's having to watch it while There's they, no dial on the no television. No dial to turn it down. <laughs> I think these shows, they have very little to do with reality. Do mm -hmm. they actually do harm? Do they mislead us about how we think our criminal justice system actually works? I do think there's an element of deception broadly in, in the entire media entertainment landscape. Uh, in, in and that, when you say broadly, you mean what? Law and Order as well, well as Judge it, Alex or Judge Judy? Yeah, exactly. Law and Order, which is a show that I love. I love. I yeah, watched that too. show obsessively growing up. However, um, they do present this image of our courts as being functioning, fair, uh, and even-handed, uh, and the reality is that they're they're dystopic. Uh, they're often s stupid, mindless, uh, and they uh, they don't make any sense. People get thrown in jail for reasons that have nothing to do with with guilt or innocence. Well, very tell me often. what happens. Take me tell me a New York story since we're talking about Law and Order, an example of how it dis is a dysfunctional system. So, for instance, in New York, we have a speedy trial rule, right? You're supposed to, if you get arrested for a misdemeanor, you're supposed to be either tried or let out uh, within 90 days. In reality, they have this little trick they can use. If you don't make bail, if you're waiting in jail, they can show up in court, say, tell the judge they're not ready to proceed, uh, get the thing rescheduled for a few months later, and then turn around the next day and file what they call a certificate of readiness, uh, which basically means that we weren't ready to proceed yesterday, now we are ready to proceed to today. It's basically just a trick to get around the 90-day restriction. In this, in this manner, they can keep people in jail on bail 
virtually indefinitely. So you might be uh, in, in jail awaiting a, a misdemeanor charge that if convicted you would get six months for, but you could be in jail waiting for a year, a year and a half just to get to be tried for that charge. Mm -hmm. And so people plead out to these offenses all the time uh, because it's less time in jail uh, that you, than you would get if you were even convicted. Matt Taibbi, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me on. Thanks.